good morning to everyone good morning let us start today our session let us continue today i am going to discuss with you about sources of information and credit investigation for us to do a successful credit evaluation or credit investigation or credit appraisal we must collect uh, important information about the customer about his business yes then only we can do a successful credit investigation or credit evaluation or credit appraisal so collection of information about the customer is very very important i have already told you a well appraised loan or credit facility is half repaid so we must do a successful credit appraisal well appraised well done appraisal okay principal objectives of gathering and analyzing information so our main objective determining strong points about the applicant situation about the application are the strong points which will lead to success of his business collection of his strong points identifying determining then at the same time recognizing weakness in the application so what are the weaknesses that is going to be the risk what are the weaknesses in the application so that is going to be the risk so you must find out how to reduce the risk eliminate the risk so weakness in the application that also you have to find out determining which peculiar factors are crucial to the proposed borrower's continuing success so what are the crucial factors will uh, will affect the borrower's continuing success when we are giving a loan maybe a medium or long term loan loan the business should continue so continuing success is very important so determining which peculiar factors are crucial which may affect the continuing success of the business so these are the principal objectives of gathering and analyzing information about the customer his business yes information gathering and analyzing sometimes there can be a trade off trade off means track record the customers track record versus amount of information how many how much of information you are going to collect about that customer depends on the trade off it depends on the track record of the customer you may remember i have i was telling you i was explaining to you about the relationship management versus transaction management so in the relationship management you are collecting the customers information and which you are collecting and keeping with you you are having a very good relationship with the customer so when it is going on when the customer comes again for the facility the amount of information you have to collect will be reduced because already you have the information about the customer so only the additional information if there is any if there are any changes or the additional information only you have to collect so always better to have a very good relationship management you establish with the customer now almost all banks are having this relationship management system some banks have this relationship management for all business sectors in their bank for the corporate businesses small commercial businesses for the sme customers for the personal customers some banks but some banks have this relationship management only for the large scale big corporate customers so all banks are doing relationship management but 
but rather banks doing the relationship management most effectively and efficiently they will lead they will lead they have the success they will have the competitive edge they will smart others okay so when you collect the information that is also another important thing your relationship management so in that case you can trade off depending the track record of the customer the amount of information which you are going to collect may be reduced because you already have the information about the customer with you under relationship management so having a relationship management for the all business sectors all sectors all banking all different different sectors is import is import good loan decision making is the result of so when you when you do your loan decision that is appraisal or evaluation yeah by you are making your loan decision credit decision is the result of gathering as many facts as possible quickly about the applicant yes determining which of the information is important and relevant to the loan decision yes expertly analyzing and interpreting the meaning of that information not only just collecting the information you must analyze and interpret that information you must interpret it what does it mean and not only that one constantly reviewing information to identify failures and success so these are very important this one you can do it very effectively and efficiently under relationship management under relationship management you can do all these things so under relationship management you will have if it is effective and efficiency then you will have a good loan decision yes so 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 in from this and now we have yes up to now we have discussed the importance of information uh, collecting the information analyzing interpreting we have seen so what are the sources of information for you to make a successful loan decision the applicant and application financial statements annual reports of the applicant project reports business plan if there is anything if there is any bank records bank references you may have to collect from other banks finance or leasing companies then the credit reports or credit ratings from credit information agencies that is crip in our country crip then credit reporting or rating agencies there are credit reporting or credit rating agencies then there are trade associations from there also you can collect information depending on what your customer is in which trade depending on that one the trade association will be helpful to provide some information about that trade about that business then there is informal sources also there can be informal sources that is suppliers buyers customers of your of your customer the loan applicant then employees of the loan applicant competitors friends relations business circle of the loan applicant then bankers yes then applicants accountants legal counsel insurance agents or consultants of the applicant with applicant's consent with applicant consent then you, you may have public, then you may have public reports you may have public report there are public reports about certain business sectors and media reports yes current business information 
that comes in the newspapers, TVs, business magazines, and internet. No internet. These are the sources of information, major sources of information you can gather. Then, based on the information and your appraisal, you can go for an interview with the customer, interview of the customer. If the interview is also successful, then you can go for inspection. You can inspection. So interviews also to collect the information. And then the inspection also to collect the information about the applicant, the customer who applied for a facility. So these, all these are the sources of information for you to make a good loan decision. Make a loan, a good loan decision. Yeah, we go one by one. Applicant and application. So the applicant can be individual, a joint, or institutional applicant. Maybe a uh, private company or a public company private limited liability company or public company, yes, individual, joint, joint, different type of applicants. So for it, different type of applicants, the banks have different type of applications also, different type of applications also depending on the type of customers. So if uh, you all are working in the bank, you would have seen the applications at least a type of one type of application you would have seen. Uh, I wonder whether you have gone through those applications. A lot of lot of information about the customer are called for, are asked for in the application. So that is an important source. The application form itself uh, is an application itself is an impo important source for you to have information about the customer right so information required in the applications what are the major information required in the applications we consider all these type of maybe individual joint institutional applicant we consider purpose and loan amount is yes asked for if you go through the application yes, you can see for what purpose, what is the loan amount? Then identification of the customer. Identification of the customer. There may be personal customers, family, and then if it is an uh, business customers, then enterprise information, various information have been asked for. Then the banking information from which bank they are banking, which bank they are banking, the banking information asked for. Then the financial standing. Financial standing. If is a individual or the joint customers, salary, and in the type of other other customers, income, expenditure, assets, liability, what are the assets they have? What are the liabilities? Then obligations, et cetera, et cetera, have been asked for in the application. The other one, of course, I have left uh, without filling, maybe for you to think about it. What are the other information asked in the applications? What are the other informations? In the case of individuals or join us, join customers, or in the case of in, in, institutional customers, maybe a private limited liability company or a public limited liability company. What are the information asked for? Yes. So what are the other information generally asked for in the applications? Okay. So if in the case of in the case of private limited liability company, there will be 
Yes. About the capital. What is the quarter capital? What is the issued capital? What is the paid up capital? You would have asked for in the applications. If you have seen any application, even the company's uh, application, a loan application for uh, private limited liability companies, you would have seen, yes, this information asked for. Then who are the directors? That is very important. The identity card number, the age, the address, all those information have been asked for. Even in the case, in the case of uh, uh, individual customers, personal customers, the identity card number. Yes. So these are the additional information. And then collateral offered. What is the collateral offered by the applicant? And finally, as a declaration by the customer applicant. What I said above are true and correct. And apart from that, I have not found guilty or anything fine in the court of law. Yes, those, those things would have been included in the application. But one point I want to stress here about the application. Generally, when the customer comes and gives the loan application, the credit officer, okay, fine. He just take it and keep it in the file. He may look look at this application maybe after a few days or maybe after a few weeks. Then he will find uh, there won't be certain columns not uh, perfect, not completed. Those 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 columns, the information should have been given in those columns would have been cr crucial for the credit officer to make this decision. So, when a customer comes and gives an application. The credit officer can spend a few minutes just run through the application. He can ask the applicant, please take your seat and he may make him to sit and then take a few minutes just to go through the application. See whether all cages or all columns have been perfected, completed. Or if there is any column or any cages not applicable, then the customer has to say, applicant has to say, they are not applicable. That is not relevant or not applicable. They are maybe. If any cases are not perfected, then he must return the application to that customer. Sir, kindly look at this application. Certain columns have not been completed. Please complete and hand it over. Those are very important to us. Then, of course, yes. That is good for you as a credit officer and for the applicant. Otherwise, if you go through after a few weeks and see those information are not there, you won't be able to make your decision. So it will delay. So then and there, you have to spend only a few weeks. Just run through with all columns. You are going to study that information later when you are doing the appraisal. But first you see whether all the columns have been completed, perfected. There may be some columns not applicable, so let him say not applicable. So that is very important. It's a piece of advice. You keep it in your mind when the application is given by that applicant. Just spend a few minutes, run through it, and see whether it is perfected completely. Otherwise, return the application and ask him to complete and give it to you. Okay, right. So these are the information in the application. Yes. Then documents submitted with application. So with the application, the customer has to submit documents, certain documents that have been asked for. In the case of personal or joint customers, personal or joint customers, NIC copy, bank details, salary receipts, etc. the additional document the customer has to submit. Customer has to submit. So those documents also provide information about the customer to you. In the case of business customers, 
they have to submit their business registration, which I have told you in my, I think, previous lectures, I have told you. The business registration, maybe sole proprietorship or partnership, their business would have been registered. The business registration certificate with the provincial registrar of company, those business registration certificates should be. In addition, they must submit the business license, copy of the business license provided by the local authority, maybe municipal council or uh, town council or Pradesh Sabha, that is business license, annual license. This license should be renewed annually. So in the case of companies also, these documents should have been, should they should give and importantly, certificate of incorporation, that is registration of the company with the registrar of company. They must keep. Then memorandum and article, actually now there is, it is called article of association. It's not the memorandum. Those days only memorandum and article of association. Now everything is combined. Now it is article of association. They must give. So they are, this is a, the article of the association give all the legal details about the company, what they can do, what they can't do, and even the objectives and everything, all information is given in the article as per the Companies Act. They must give. Then there is an import. There are so many forms as per this Companies Act, so many forms uh, the, the applicant it uh, is certified by the secretaries to be given periodically. But the important forms uh, for you to make your decision, credit decision, there is one form, form number 20. Form number 20. That is the change of directors, if there is any. So directors are important people of a company. They are the people managing the company. So the change of directors form, that is form number 20. Apart from that, form number one, that is initial first registration, uh, the form uh, given for the registration purpose. There are, of course, details of, direct, details of directors and the details of shareholders, company secretaries, all the informations are there. So that also should be given form number one and form number 20, 20 is for change of director. There is another important document, uh, the applicant company have to give. Just think uh, yourself. I will tell you, I will tell you what it is. It's yourself, please think what could be the additional important document they have to give in the case of companies. Well, <clears throat> resolution. In the case of companies, directors, board of directors, resolution is an important document. So thereby they decide to borrow from this bank, this branch, what is the amount, for what purpose, all those things should have been mentioned in the board resolution. So board resolution, they have to give in the case of company. Then taxation details existing companies, if they are paying the taxes, the taxation details. So if they would have paid taxes, then that payment slips, what they have paid, the payment slips should have been attached with the application. Or sometimes the auditors make the payment, the company's auditors make the payment to the Inland Revenue Department and they issue certificates this for this year, this is the amount paid with other details. They give a certificate. So that certificate would be service. That is, they have made their payment. So that certificate could be attached with the application. So taxation details, with the taxation details, payment slips or certificates issued by uh, their company auditors, auditors. 
So what are the other documents? Just think about it. In the case of application, what are the other documents they will give? What are the other documents? In the case of business customers, they may give a business plan or a project report. In the case of business customers, they may give a business plan they have to give. Or if it is a something big a project, they may give their project report. They have prepared this. The applicant, applicant company would have prepared with the assistant of a external consultant. They may get an external consultant to prepare a project report about their intended project. So the business plan or project report could be given to the bank. Okay, so these are the documents submitted with the application. Then financial statements also they have to give about their financial statement with the application. They have to give their financial statement. A financial statement can be audited, maybe unaudited or maybe draft. So when we say financial statement, the financial statement consists of profit and loss statement, balance sheet as a particular date, cash flow statement. These are the financial statement, profit and loss statement, balance sheet of the company, cash flow statement. We jointly we say financial statement. And uh, the meaning of audited, unaudited, or draft, we should know what is a, people say audited financial statement, unaudited, or draft. So what is the meaning of And in the case of financial statement also, for the past years, for the past years, annual financial statement for the past year. We call it operating financial statement. The financial statements of what have happened the past years, that is called as operating financial statement. Similarly, the company may expect their business to run like that and they may project a financial statement also. We call it projected financial statement. So there are two types. One is operating financial statement. That there, there is operating profit and loss, operating balance sheet, operating cash flow statement. And uh, business may expect to perform like this. So project it. So we call it projected financial statement projected profit and loss statement, projected balance sheet, projected cost cash flow statement. So there are two types. Okay, in the case of operating financial statement, that is past financial statement, banks are generally asking for last three years. Last three years. Okay, so last three years mean now. Now the month of July. Yes, now the month of July 2020. The last financial statement would have been end up in March 30, the 31st of March 2020. Last financial statement, March 31st, March 2020. So that was the period from 1st April 2019 to 1st April 2019 to 31st March 2020. That is one financial statement for one particular year. Before that, previous year would have been started from 1st April 2018 
till 31st March 2019. Before that, 1st April 2017 to 31st March 2018. So for this three year period, financial statement, operating financial statement, that is past financial statement, bank asked. Right. So when we say audited, these financial statement would have been prepared when we say audited financial statement, the meaning of it, the company, the business enterprise would have prepared the financial statement, the accountant of the company would have prepared the financial statement. And then, then it is audited by the external approved auditors, chartered auditors. And it is signed by the signed by those auditors together with their opinion. So that audit is completed. When the auditors audit the financial statement, and then if they sign together with their opinion, then that audit is completed. That is called as audited financial statement. So that is one audited financial statement. Then unaudited financial statement means the financial statement has been prepared by the company's accountant and then audited by the external auditors but not yet signed together with their opinion that is unaudited. You must understand the difference. Then the draft financial statement means the financial statement has been prepared by the company's accountant, not yet audited by the external auditors. So when we say audited, unaudited and draft, the correctness of that financial statement also you can understand. When it is audited, it is more corrected. When it is unaudited, there may be still correction because it is audited by the external audited auditors but not signed with their opinion. So it is, there can be amendments to this financial statement. And that there are still, there can be more amendments. So when you say auditor, so when you analyze the financial statement, you must say it is audited financial statement, it is unaudited and it is a draft. So thereby the correctness, you can, yes, the appraising officer will understand the correctness of the financial statement, acceptance of that financial statement. So this is operating financial statement for the last three years as a particular years, yes, last three years. Similarly, for the projected years also, the company about their business, they will give their financial statement. Projected profit and loss statement, projected balance sheet, projected cash flow statement, based on the operating financial statement. How the Companies, business is operated, financial statement going on. Based on that one, they may assume improvement. Based on that one, they will give the projected financial statement. So all these things, all these statements, you have to analyze. Okay, now there is, I said, now it is the month of July. The last financial statement, they would have given you as at 31st March, 2020. As at 31st March 2020, they have given the financial statement. The last financial statement maybe would have been audited or unaudited or draft, maybe. But from that period, from that month, that is last 31st March 2020, then 1st April 2020, till to date, also the business is in operation. You don't know the performance of this business. So you can ask them to give a 
many many count for this period from 1st april 2020 till today that is july or oh, yes month of july or oh, month of june till this period for the six months period uh, or four months period you can ask their management accounts prepared by their accountant that also will be useful so all these financial statement you will gather and do your analysis okay so this is financial statement the customers the applicant gives then in the case of big companies public companies they print annual reports in the case of public companies annual reports you all are working in financial institutions big financial institution your financial institution prepare the annual reports your financial institution you are the places where you are working your company your financial institutions they prepare their annual reports so these annual reports also provide so many information about that company about that institution so in the annual reports generally what you can see what are the information given there is chairman statement about the business development and other thing yes then the directors or ceo report chief executive officers report will be there then general information of the business is there given that one then shareholder details who are the shareholders their details will be there then the auditors report will be there the, the company audited the financial statement of this company the auditors report will be there so they are the financial audited financial statement included audited financial statements included with that one what are the accounting policies they have followed what are the accounting policies they have followed in that uh, proposal in the in that report they have given then notes the accounts also they have given what else what are the other information in the annual reports maybe you would have seen your companies or your banks annual reports so many other informations are given those are useful those are useful for your analysis those are useful for your analysis what are the other information just think about in the first page the inner side their vision mission and yes values yeah so you can see what is their vision what are what is their mission what are their values argument in the first page and by apart from that risk analysis risk is given what are the risk their marketing information is given and what are the achievements milestones given so they are by you watch how this company is building up how this company is growing you can see then corporate responsibility crs corporate responsibility about that one they would have given what they have done corporate social responsibility csr so what they have done to the society what are their social responsibility what they have done to the society they would have given market information what they are going to do their future plan their future plan so those are valuable information for you to do your analysis so those informations are given so please if you not have seen any annual reports of a company annual reports public company please even your own organization that is where you are working take that one and see if you are really working in a bank or a financial institution the risk analysis is very very important you can go through it 
you can go through it and they are marketing so how is the current business situation there's a write up there will be a write up what is the current business what are the what are the problem they have faced all those information they generally give in their annual reports so that is another important document for you to gather information about your customer then the bank records yes bank records so in the case of individuals or joint borrowers or business customers the bank records with you how this customer performing with you you can analyze performance of accounts how the customer perform his accounts it can be current account personal or business accounts current account so there you can find out how their cash management so by going through the current accounts of the customers or applicants they may be individual or joint or business customers you can see how they are managing their cash cash management what are the sources from where they are getting the income how they use us what is the amount they are getting what is the amount they are spending you can go to it for that purpose you generally take what is the highest balance lowest balance average balance what is the total deposits how is the withdrawals any check returns if any yes these things yes you can those days of course we had to do it manually there are loan ledgers loan ledger so when the customer is applying then of course manager wants this information so we prepare manually it is prepared but now it is not so it is a system when you yes when you make the system then the system will give all these information within no time within no time you can collect all these information through the system similarly the cash deposits and use of credit cards especially the personal customers how they are using their credit cards from there you can identify your you can find out how they manage their cash cash management is very important you can then similarly you go through their loan accounts if they would have borrowed earlier their credit card accounts yeah. what are the type of facilities they have obtained in the past what are the types of facilities they have obtained then honoring their obligations how they honor their obligation the regular in their payment in the repayment are they regular or irregular if your bank whether they are regular or irregular in their repayment then the default records also you can go through it whether you have to you have to judge whether it's a willful defaulter or non willful defaulter especially in the case of some customers maybe agricultural customers due to natural hazards they may face the crop failures maybe drought or floods due to that one so they are unable to do anything but generally they take the insurance there is a insurance crop insurance they can take uh, but sometimes yes in the case of Uh, in the case of paddy farming agriculture agriculture insurance is a must but in the case of other crops of course it is not so so they crop failure they won't get the income so sometimes they may not pre pay so they are can be considered as non willful defaulters but there are willful defaulters there may be good harvest there may be no problem no natural hazard they would have got a very good harvest but they don't pay willful defaulters so you 
So this is in the case of agriculture. Similarly, in the case of all sectors, industrial, business, all sectors, you must identify if there is default, whether it is a willful default or, or non-willful default. This is important. Right? Then other details about the business information you have to collect. Business information. When the business is started, uh, the, all those information, what type of business, all the information you can collect other details. And now, of course, as per the central bank requirement, know your customer. Know your customer. That document is very, very helpful for you to do your credit evaluation when uh, the customers make their application. Know your customer. That detail, that information. Is very very useful. Then the bank references. Those days, when a customer is making the application to a branch, that branch manager used to call for bank references from the neighboring branches, other bank branches. Because sometimes this customer would have borrowed from them. Maybe would have repaid regularly, or maybe irregular repayment, or maybe default. So that would have happened. So because of that one, the bank manager used to call for bank references from the nearby branches. We call it status reports from other banks, finance companies or leasing companies, status reports, we call it. So when you call for this report from the neighboring branches, you won't get a success, very satisfactory reply, you won't get. Anyway, you will get a reply. It provides an indication only. It provides just an indication. Without no signature or anything, in a piece of paper, some indication is given. Conduct of accounts and credit facilities, yes, they will give. maintain a routine account. Or like that, they give some indication without sign or anything. So it is not comprehensive. It won't give, it won't. But anyway, those days, those days, you collect those status, you have to collect the status from status reports from your neighboring other bank branches. And you have to keep it in the file because you have looked at that, uh, that aspect also. But now, of course, it is not done. It is not necessary also because you are collecting the CRIP report. We are going to discuss about it. So that is very comprehensive. The CRIP report is very, very comprehensive. Give a lot of information about custom. Right. So the bank references also, they are earlier. Now the credit reports. Credit report. This is very valuable. This is very valuable report. This gives very valuable information. Credit information bureau. Credit report. So now the bank managers through the system. The bank managers have been given a password. So when a customer makes the application for a loan. The bank manager can call for the grip report through the system. So the grip report give very, 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 very comprehensive information about the customer, about his financial uh, dealing transactions, about that. And then there is another institution provide the credit reports about the customers, overseas customers, Dun and Bradstreet, a very famous, from those days itself, very reputed institution. So when there are any foreign customers, foreign companies, if you want to find out their performance, their, their credit, their financial position, Dun and Bradstreet, they can provide. You can call for reports through this institution, Dun and Street. Earlier, they had a 
they had the office in Batramulla. Yeah, I think still today uh, they may have the office in Batramulla. I think yeah. Then the Fitch. Yeah, they also. This is another reputed institution. We will learn about them later. So they also provide these credit reports. So one is Credit Information Bureau, other one in Dun and Bersheet, and then Fitch. They are the institution providing credit reports when you are calling for Credit Information Bureau. In my previous lectures, I told you, I have when I was discussing something about this Credit Information Bureau and the CRIP report I was discussing. Please, if anybody would not have seen this CRIP report, through your credit officer or the branch manager, just a copy of the credit report and look at it. And not only that one, you must know how to interpret the information given in the credit report. That is very important, very comprehensive, really very, very comprehensive this credit report. But you must know, you must go through it and uh, you must interpret it. By keeping that credit report only, you can. So your bank manager or the credit officer where you are working may be helpful. Yeah. So what are the information generally available in the uh, credit report? Obviously, name, address of the person and the NIC number. Then as a borrower, as a guarantor, what are the financial transactions with the lending institutions, with the bank, with the leasing companies, with the finance companies, yes. What are their uh, financial transactions with their borrowings with these uh, institutions, formal institutions, as borrower, as guarantor, the information is given, right. Then what are the facility types? what type of facilities they have taken. Whether it is a loan facility or a import facility or an export facility or a, or a leasing facility, higher purchase facility, the type of facility. The information, yes, see indicator. As a borrower, as a guarantor, this information is given. And there are, what are the other information given? This is for you to think and tell. This is for you to think. Just think about a few seconds. What are the other information given in this? Um, lot of information. Very, very important information are given in this CRIP report. The repayment. How? It is regular or irregular? How many insolvents outstanding? What is the loan amount? What is the insolvent? The last period, how many months it is paid? Regular or irregular? If it is overdue, yes, how much? All the information. And whether, what is the action taken? Recovery action. Recovery action. Whether it is in the court, whether it is written off, all those information. And then about the customer, as a customer, if he is a director of a company, those information also given. If he is a director, now he is making a application as, on, as a personal customer, but at the same time, he may be a director of a company. Those information, what are the borrowings of those companies? All those information. And then check returns. Customers, the applicant, if there are any check return, check return information is given. Then, and another beautiful thing, if he is looking for credit facilities now from other bank, those information also given. Whether he is looking for credit facilities from other banks, that information also from which bank he is seeking the credit facilities. Is given. So there are so many information given in regard to the person's 
the applicant you are you want to you want the report about him as a guarantor or as a borrower the information his financial transaction with the lending institutions is given in the crip report so you must try to you must you must try to yeah what is a branch what is a branch name of the branch all the information given and it is available through internet for the managers of the lending institution it is available through internet by using their password and now it is available to individuals also the individuals can go to the individuals can go to the uh, credit information bureau i think that is in the sri island by giving their national identity card and making a payment of maybe i think 250 rupees i think yes yes and ask for your own credit uh, report what happened in other countries as i told you last lecture in other countries you can get your credit reports so similarly you also can get your credit report and see what is your uh, position financial transaction position so now it is available to individuals by making a payment and providing their uh, national identity card they can and it is told that information coverage to be expanded now only with the financial institution but there was a possibility to expand the uh, uh, information coverage from telephone companies from electricity companies uh, electricity uh, supply institution water board about the customers payment the regular regular that type of information also to be included so the information coverage to be expanded right so now i must tell you last uh, last lecture i was discussing about the credit score system now the credit score system it was earlier i mean almost all developed countries they were using the credit score system to find out uh, uh, whether a facility can be given to an applicant to decide for them to decide they were using the credit score system even in india they were using few years back itself but recently our in sri lanka also central bank has introduced this system through the credit information bureau uh, last two that is 2020 february since february they have started credit score system for sri lankans so they have developed it through the assistance of uh, uh, some foreign company iceland they said it is some iceland company they have developed based on the credit information available with them they provide the credit score to the banks so this credit score i told you last time fico credit score that run from 300 to 850 i told but here now our sri lankan credit score through this credit information bureau is start from 250 to 800 850 they said yes and closer to 850 that is less credit risk that is their credit um, uh, that is the credit capacity is good they are less risky and whereas on the other side closer to 250 they are risky customers so when it is closer to uh, 850 so they are credit worthy customers when they are closer to 250 they are risky customers so now they say central bank they they provide this credit score to the lending institution when they are calling for when they are asking for they will provide this credit uh, score of a particular customer particular loan applicant to the lending institution so based on that one they can do their other analysis also and they can decide the credit decision they can make uh, so this will they expect central bank expect this will facilitate the lending institution to do their lending more effectively and within 
without taking much time frame without taking much time they can decide so this is the credit uh, score system now the last lecture i have i have explained to you about the details of uh, credit uh, score system how it was developed how it was implemented what are the benefits of this credit score system actually it was done whether they are in a different uh, apart from the fico whether they are any other different uh, credit score system yes all those things i have explained to you but now in sri lanka uh, with the central bank assistant credit information bureau has developed their credit score system for sri lankan and that will facilitate the credit decision by the credit providers that is our banks and other financial institution so they can get these services from the credit information bureau right so this is the credit information bureau and the and the credit reports crip reports a very very valuable report for the credit officers and the credit managers then the credit rating so this also so credit scoring and credit rating there are resemblances similarities and the credit rating is something different something different company rating provides an indication now the credit rating business companies can get their credit rating they can get their credit rating through some external credit rating agency there are credit rating agencies local agencies also there are international agencies also there there are certain credit rating agency through the assistant or with the assistant the business enterprises companies corporation can get their credit rating so what this credit rating do it provides an indication when a company do a credit rating for themselves through an external credit rating agency then the rating provides an indication about what the business strength of the company and the vulnerability for international internal and external factors so there are maybe vulnerability there may be that way. the internal and external factors may affect the company's business so all those information is given by this credit rating so this credit rating also we can the credit officer or the credit manager can obtain to facilitate their credit decision so this credit rating is carried out by international or local rating agencies so there are some big three there are some uh, uh, some international agencies one is fitch international standard and poor and there is our local agency lanka rating agency also there so these are the some credit rating agency they provide this rating on the request by business uh, companies and provide the rating so this rating also helpful for the bank credit officer to make his credit decision then the another one project reports or business plan the customers applicant companies or business enterprises may provide a project report or business plan to the credit officers to the bank with their loan application they provide so obviously the project reports are prepared by the business enterprises with the assistance of external consultants with the assistance of external consultants the business enterprises companies private companies or limited liability uh, public companies they prepare project reports about their business with the assistance of external consultants then they submit is project reports to the bank about their business what they are going to do they expect a 
credit facility, maybe 100 million or 200 million loan facilities for their project. So they give a project report prepared by external consultant. So bank credit officer or the bank uh, manager, what he has to do, he has to analyze the project report. The manager has to, our credit officer has to analyze the project report. He is not going to prepare the project report. He won't prepare. His duty to analyze, but there is some one except exception. Because of, so when this business enterprises prepare the project report through an external consultant, they have to make a big payment. They have to make a big payment, but there is one Exception, in the case of small and medium enterprises, in the case of small and medium enterprises, those uh, enterprises, they can't afford to pay a big amount to the external consultants. So the bank credit officer helped them to prepare the project report. He visit the small and medium enterprise and collect the information and prepare. So in that case, if a bank officer prepare the project report for the SME customers, then another officer has to appraise it. That should be the way. Or otherwise, if the officer preparing the project report would have make any mistake, this will be un unattended. This will not be looked into. If another, if the same person is doing the appraisal. So generally, the same person who prepared the project report shouldn't do the appraisal. There is another credit officer has to appraise it. That should be the way. That is only in the case of small and medium enterprises. Because to help that enterprises, otherwise he has to make payment, big amount to the external uh, consultant. Earlier, actually, when I remember correctly, when in the case of NDB, initially it was a development bank, NDB, at the beginning. So that was a development bank providing credit facilities for the SMEs, for the projects, for the projects, for the industries. That time they had a separate cell, a technical cell, they had a separate cell for the purpose of preparing project reports. So there were some officers, when the customers come to this SME, customers come to this bank, NDB, at that time it was a development bank, now it is a commercial bank. So they will be sent to this technical cell. The technical cell assist and prepare and give a project report about this small and medium enterprise. Then the bank credit officer appraises. So this is done. Apart from that, in the bank, no, no credit officer prepare the project report. The credit officer appraise, evaluate the project reports prepared by the company through the external consultant. So when the same person prepare the report, appraising, there may be mistakes, non unnoticed. That will be the risk affect the enterprise. I can remember in the case of Bank of Ceylon, in the industrial credit department, there was a separate group for the credit group, credit committee. So they are also helping the small scale enterprises, SME customers, for in preparing their reports. Then that report is put into the credit committee. That is a separate uh, industrial credit committee that is put into the industrial credit committee. So the committee, all the credit officers go through it and make questions and yeah, if there are any mistake, they, they attend to it and correct it. So that was go through the credit committee, industrial credit committee, the credit report prepared by the, the project report prepared by the individual officer. Looked at by so many credit officers. So now, actually the credit officer should have the ability to analyze the project report. Actually the credit officer should have the develop 
his ability to evaluate and study the project report and find out the risks that are there, provide how can the safeguards to eliminate the risk and all those things. That is the that is the thing that credit officer has to do. And then finally, he will prepare a credit memorandum. He prepare a credit memorandum or credit proposal. A credit report may be run into 40, 50 pages with all those things. But whereas a credit memorandum to the superior officers or to the, the bank credit committee or to the bank board, it can't be about 40, 50 pages. No, no time for them to go through all these. No, these important salient points, some information given in the credit memorandum. It may run into two, three pages. A credit memorandum or credit proposal run into two, three pages. All important things about that project, about that business is included. So the management, the higher, higher management, that can be an AGM or a DGM or a credit committee, bank credit committee, or the bank board of directors can go through and make their final decision for that. So you must understand, but the project reports are important for you to analyze and evaluate. And that should be given by the business enterprise. And they would have prepared it with the assistance of external consultant. Right. So now project reports. Sometimes some of you would have seen the project reports. What are the contents of the project reports? Obviously, introduction will be there. And then brief detail about the project, what the project is, what this project is, a brief description for you to understand what it is. Then, who are the entrepreneurs or the project proponents? Who is the management of the project? So there are those details, management of the so who are the people going to manage this project? Then their details, their age, their name, age, their qualifications, the experience in this field. The experience in this field is given. So if everything is okay, you can judge whether these people are capable, whether these people are capable to run this business. So management, management. Then the project in details. Then the project in details. First of course, project in brief, the small description. Now the project in detail, right? What and what things they are going to do. Then under project in detail, what they are going to do in detail and about the location, yeah, where it is, what is the extent of the land, all those information within the utility facilities for this project, for this project. Then the electricity facility, whether it is single phase or double phase or three phase or whatever it is, or no phase or whatever it is, yes, all those information. Then the water facilities, then the communication facilities, and then access, all those details related to the location and the utilities so you will yes you can see so in the case of location whether it is sometime whether it goes underwater whether there may be a drought situation all those things right we will see in our inspection also we saw we, are, we can see these things so all those information about the location right then the buildings if it is necessary those information details and the building plan, structural plan, if it is, yes, all those things included, all the information will be there. The project in details. So, so of course, management, whether they are capable of running this business, and then project in detail, whether this project can be carried out in this way, as they described, will be given. Then the financial outlay. How is the financial outlay? How much? all the details and then how the finance will be financed how the project cost will be financed 
then what is a bank loan amount anticipated or requested what is their equity contribution they have they have given in this project report under financial uh, description so under same thing the profitability forecast profitability forecast so there yeah, the projected financial statement will come projected uh, profit and loss projected balance sheet projected cash flow statement will come there then after that one then the environment aspect environment so how far this uh, this this uh, project is uh, beneficial how far this project beneficial or not beneficial or harmful to the environment various environment pestle analysis will be given and then economic analysis how far this project is beneficial to the country economically so they say there are certain uh, financial analysis you have to do that is irr analysis you have to do economic irr you have to carry out and finally the conclusion all these things are included in the project report if a well prepared project report is very very useful for a credit officer well prepared project report. it can be a project report or a business plan is very very useful to the so i hope uh, you would have seen some project reports that's what the contents of the project report i wanted you to but anyway i have told you i have explained you so what are the information in the project report and now by going through this project report the credit officers you will analyze and if it is satisfactory then you will prepare a credit memorandum or credit proposal for your hire management it can be your immediate supervisor immediate manager maybe an agm or maybe a dgm or a credit committee or the board of directors so in a within, within three or four pages but there can be an attachment there can be an excess attachment but the main important paper should have all the important point extracted from this project report and your analysis we will learn how to pre prepare a credit proposal for the credit memorandum to the higher management we will discuss it later we will discuss it later in the informal information so we have seen the formal information now sometimes you have to collect some informal informal information also what are the sources of informal information yes type of information whether this business is doing well or this business is uh, doing badly there are internal problem these are the type of uh, information you can get in form in india you know the lands lands company well reputed company indian land involved in so many uh, sectors telecommunication this mobile sector oil sector oil extraction oil business and building so many after tata and billa this lands company ambani's mukesh ambani and yeah they were the very big companies run by their father after the father's death the two sons they got a problem they got problem and they are they were internal fights they were internal fights between the two brothers then their mother mother only he has went in to settle both people and divided all the properties into their both sons you do these these the, the things we sambani and other ambani you do these these the things and they were separated so what i am saying is any businesses especially the family owned businesses there can be internal problems so without knowing those internal problem when you advance when you grant a facility you may be in problem so better to find out that problem won't come in the formal way 
that problem may not come through the form informal so that type of thing if there are any yes whether this business this business is yes siphoning off the funds they are taking off the fund from the business for some other purpose formally you won't get that informally only you will get some people are asking for a facility okay you are considering at the same time that people they are taking off the funds for some other purposes which you don't know without knowing if you advance then you may be in problem so that type of problem a type of information may come through the informal way informal information so these are the information family dispute taking of the funds for some other purposes is any some illegal activities yes there may be illegal activities so these are the types of information to get informal way then the credibility and the dependability of this information that also yes the credibility whether that depends on the source from which source you are getting this information the credibility or the dependable whether you can depend sometime lanu denuva kiyala kiyanwani lanu denuva kiyala sometime yes so that type of maybe that type of information so the credibility or the dependability of those information depend on the source from where you are getting you have to decide whether you can depend on so this also another important thing informal information so in in management they call it grape vine information grape vine information they call it <clears throat> so this information also informal information also you have to you have to consider in the case of big businesses as what happened in ambani's plants international ambani's family in india big They were really big company, but they had a big problem. The mother only went into and settled. So now they are divided into two. One company now divided into two. Then the public reports. <clears throat> Then the public reports. So there are public reports. you can gather informations from this public reports but uh, central bank reports yeah when you go to the central bank so they public publish reports on various sectors various sectors yeah so those reports will be useful for you to analyze the business uh, sectors different business sectors where your customer is seeking the facility maybe he is a garment uh, maybe a garment uh, a factory they want a big facility so about that one there may be garment industry the report prepared by the garment industry by the central bank is available similarly on various sectors central bank periodically prepare the reports so that reports will give some valuable information for you to make your credit decision then trade associations there are trade associations chambers public journals or business environment and the data also trade association there are trade association garment exporters association coconut exporters association gem exporters associations jewelry exporters associations so many associations small small and medium enterprise association there are so many enterprise and then chambers chamber of industries chamber of industries in navamavath kalam navamavath chamber of industry there are various chambers there are various chambers so then they prepare journals they prepare publish they publish journals periodic journals so the journal also provide information about the various sectors where they are operating trade association the coconut the coconut prices rubber prices tea prices the trade associations and if there are any crucial information crucial factors affecting their uh, production 
the all indicated in those in those journals similarly chambers so journals so that will give some valuable information and the business environment also about the house the business environment for that particular sector and in addition some valuable data also included in those journals so it will be helpful then reports published by department of commerce export development board uh, department of commerce they also re publish reports sometimes the periodically yeah they publish reports on various sectors commercial sectors valuable yeah, some some reports are really valuable and similarly the export development board also yes they provide they also publish reports and they provide services information services in regard to exports to the lending institution when you are asked so about certain sectors even a customer is one maybe a uh, floriculture or cut uh, ornamental plants exporter is seeking a facility to expand his uh, uh, this uh, nursery or his uh, agriculture venture maybe asking about 50 million rupees loan so he is exporting to japan or various other countries cut flowers and uh, ornamental plants so if you want to find out the sector you can contact the export development board they will provide you information may be valuable for this particular sector various sector the export development board they can provide yes report pub reports published by department of commerce and export development board they will then commodity brokers report yes there are. these are the commodity brokers report tea rubber coconut yeah so these brokers they publish reports yeah publish reports so they are also information will be provided various information related to particular sector will be beneficial to you to make your credit decision then share brokers issue company analysis right there are share brokers association is there they also periodically publish some some reports on certain companies analysis they analyze the companies and various sectors i can remember in the past various sectors they have published very valuable reports so this will be help to you for, to make your credit decision so we call it public reports so, so you must be aware as a credit officer you must be aware these are the sources which you can tap to collect information yes central bank reports are there trade association chambers and uh, report published by department of commerce export development board commodity brokers and share brokers so they prepare the reports in regard to various sectors various companies that will be very valuable to you or you to make your credit decision right so once you are going through this information get through this information all these things in regard to your customer loan application by collecting so you don't need to collect all these things. it's relevant for your customers application the relevant information you can will be helpful to you do your final your, your credit evaluation so these are the sources major sources which you can tap you can collect for you to make your credit decision so now the customer has given you the application uh and then he has given you a project report or a business plan now you are going through it analyzing what are the risks involved and various things and analyzing after analyzing if you are satisfied uh, okay now i can think yes i can consider this now i can consider if you think then the next step so this is the appraising step stage then you can call the customer for an interview 
So you have to spend some time on the application and the project report or the business plan, these customers um, dealing with your bank, other bank, all those things after collecting and after doing your evaluation, initial initial evaluation. If you think you can go further, if you think you can go further, you can ask the customer for an interview. Okay, the interview. Importance of customer interview. Importance of customer interview. So why? So this is also for the collection of information. Customers interview also for the collection of interview. Understanding the business operation. Yes, it would have been given in the application. But anyway, when you get it through his mouth, yeah, you can understand the business operation. Understanding the purpose and amount of credit requirement through interacting. By interacting, sometimes you would have asked more funds, maybe more big loan. Actually, he may require the lesser amount. So, understanding the purpose, what is the purpose he wants? And amount of credit requirement through interacting by yes, interacting. Sometimes maybe he made a mistake, he would have he would have asked less amount. Maybe his consultant would have given, not given the correct information, correct picture. So sometimes he would have thought uh, less amount may be enough. But if it's a less amount, he may be he may get into trouble, he may not be able to complete the project. So interacting. The, what is the amount of credit required? How much you require? Verify available information. This information we have been given in the application and the project reports and various other. But you must verify by interacting. By interacting, you have to verify with the customer. Then collecting additional information, some information would not have been given. Would not have been given. By interacting, by using your your experience and the skill collecting additional information from the customer. Then understanding future plan and prospects of the business. So now not only up to now, this business should grow. Then only it is better for you and for your institution and the customer and the institution. It should be a win-win situation. It should be a win-win situation. Customer should prospect, the bank also should benefit should get the benefit. So understanding future plan and prospect of the business. What are the customer's future plan and how far this business will be successful, it will go up. Earlier also I told you, now the big corporates or big businesses in Sri Lankan, big businesses all started as a small enterprise, small and medium enterprises. But they have suffered, they would have gone, undergone a lot of problems, a lot of problems. And they have come up to this level through their enterprising ability, hard work. There is no replacement for the hard work. There is no replacement for the hard work. So hard work, enterprising ability, and the ideal way they are planning and everything only. Oh, they had a downfall and problem. Failures and they have come up to this level. So understanding with the plan and prospects of the business. And really, uh, I must tell you another small story. There was a big, uh, now he's a very big uh, customer. He started, started as a small, small way. And the bank has helped. He has come up. He was very sincere to the bank. Uh, you're doing all the things with the, all or everything. Yes, little by with lot of difficulties, cases, court cases, face the cases. He has come up somehow. And one bank officer made a mistake. One bank manager or the credit officer made a mistake to that customer. Since then, that customer has gone to other banks. Other banks were waiting for him. With open arm, they welcomed him. So actually the hard work and everything was done by one bank, <laughs> did everything for him. And he was sincere to the bank. We can't blame that. Only one person made the mistake. One bank officer made the mistake. That customer was 
last time I had gone to another bank. So this way I am saying the relationship banking, the relationship banking, the whole bank as a whole bank, the institution as a whole should do the relationship banking effectively and efficiently. So if a one person or two person make the mistake, that will throw some good customers away from you. So relationship banking, yes, all are doing. How far you all are doing effectively and efficiently. With 100% effectively? Efficiently? Yeah, then of course, no one can, no one can uh, come closer to you, your bank. Maybe doing 50% effectively? Efficiently? So the effectiveness and the efficiency in the relationship banking should be at the maximum. Anyway, so understanding future plan and prospect of the business. So these are the things, the importance of customer interview. Well, now the time is, yeah, anyway, we go, right. Before the interview, another interview is there. So you have decided after doing this analysis and everything, you have decided, okay, interview. So before the interview, check all the documents, including application and business plan. You have to, you are doing it, so check. Mark and highlight the shady areas and items need further clarification in those documents. And make notes to facilitate cross-checking. So, you have gone through it and there may be shady, obviously there will be shady areas. There may be areas which you do not, something you couldn't accept, you didn't understand, it is not uh, clearly stated. So mark those shady areas in the document. And to facilitate the cross-checking and find out the actual position. So you have to make all the document you must go through for further clarification in those documents and make notes to facilitate cross-checking. And then, you know, yes, the customer is going to come for the interview. Prepare for an open and straightforward interview. You must prepare yourself. But generally, some credit officers, they don't do it. The owner know they call the customer having a discussion and you yeah, know. So you must prepare yourself before the interview. The customer also wasting his time and coming. He is wasting his time and coming. So I told you the transaction cost. Yeah, monetary cost, non-monetary cost. Monetary cost, the money spent by the customer. Transaction cost in transaction in a business transaction in the in the loan transaction. Yeah, maybe various payments he has to make, legal charges, valuation charges, service charge, document charge, all those charges. Yeah, inspection charges, those are monetary cost, transaction cost, monitor, non-monetary time. time. That is valuable for it. Best customers, best businessmen, time is very important. Time is very, very important. So, so you must prepare for an open and straightforward interview uh, for the customer. Okay, now I want to ask, I want to tell you one thing. Now, what of thing we have discussed? Uh, the collection of information, so many things. So when a customer comes with a project report and given to you, I am in this uh, banana cultivation. I am going to grow banana the imported variety in uh, in about uh, 50 acres of land in I have got on lease or purchase or whatever it is. I'm going to yeah, grow banana. Is there big, a big project report? Uh, there are, of course, uh, what I told you about the project, the project in brief, management, uh, this one, marketing, I have tell you about the marketing. That is another important thing. How they are going to do the marketing in the project report. The marketing should be there, all the information I'm giving you. But <laughs> you are a credit officer, you have never done any agricultural, uh, you are not from an agricultural family, 
maybe a Colombo fee based uh, family. You, know? you would not have seen uh, agricultural, you would have eaten banana, but you would not have seen a banana tree. Uh, maybe like that, but you are doing your credit officer. So the report is given to you. The manager wants you to go through it and uh, give you a uh, analysis about the project. How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? You are a Colombo based person. You don't know anything about the agriculture. That's me. But uh, you are a good credit officer, maybe about uh, two, three years you are doing the credit work. You would have uh, appraised or evaluated uh, many, many business plans or many business uh, applications, loans. Yeah, so you are a capable person, yes. Then how are you doing? So one thing, important thing, always you must have update your knowledge. You must update your knowledge always. That is an important thing for a credit. As generally in the lectures I, I used to say, now the banking profession is a number one, the one of the best profession in Sri Lanka, not only in Sri Lanka, you take the whole of the world. The banker is a respected person even in UK, even in um, Europe, uh, even in uh, when the banker means a reputed person, respected person. So Sri Lanka, it is not an exception here also. A banking officer, bank officer is a reputed person, reputed profession. So the profession, the reputation come through not just, uh, that's what the banks are paying you all well. All bank employees are paid well with a lot of facilities, they are paid well. So just for nothing they are paying for your knowledge and your commitment. So you must update your knowledge. Continuing professional, uh, profession, continuing professional the effectiveness, continuing professional knowledge, continuing professional knowledge. So you must always update your knowledge. So you must know what are the various sectors. So you are not from the agricultural family or agricultural area. So you are only Colombo based person. So you must, since you are doing this job, since you are doing this job, you must know, uh, you must have a fair knowledge of everything. You must update your knowledge in agriculture, in export, in fisheries, in, um, in, in, in uh, uh, industries, in commerce, in e-commerce, in all these areas, you must have a fair knowledge and update your knowledge. So how to update? How to update? So when a customer comes and give you a project report, uh, saying that he want to do about plant uh, banana cultivation, in about 50 acres land. So you just run and take an agricultural book, see how to do banana cultivation, uh, how long it will take to give the product, uh, what are the agricultural practices. You must have always update your knowledge. You should not go into, you should not go very, very deep into that particular sector, but you must have a knowledge here. How to update? That is the reason the papers, newspapers, give various information, periodicals, news items, TV news, radio news, internet. So these are very valuable sources for you to get your knowledge. So when you are always update your knowledge, fair knowledge of everything, then when the Banana cultivation project report comes also. Yes, you can handle it. But the only thing you should know, the certain technical aspect you are not aware. You don't know. Okay, well, you contact a consultant. You speak to a consultant in agriculture. You may know someone or go to agriculture department. There are so many people, technical people in various sectors. You are from this bank. I want to get some information about the banana cultivation. You can speak to a technical person in the agricultural department. Similarly, whatever the sector, there are just some maybe the coconut cultivation. Yes, coconut cultivation board, you can obtain the services. 
technical matters the only thing is technical matters so whenever the project report or a business plan is given by a customer for you to for your appraisal or the evaluation you no need to get panic or no you have a fair knowledge what to do where to collect the information all those things are there all other things of course it is easy the thing the problem for you may be only the technical matter so that the technical matter also there are different technical people from whom you can from them you can collect the necessary information to do your or otherwise even the internet the internet almost all any 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 cultivation or any industry all the thing sometime some wrong information also may be there in the internet yes there are sometimes wrong information also may be there so but you have to cross check it you have to cross check it. so as a credit officer you are in a, a respectable respected profession so respected profession that should be maintained by updating your knowledge updating your skill so you have to spend time for that one read the business news read the papers that is the reason the banks provide pay newspapers to all branches So you you should update your knowledge. You know what is happening in the environment. TV TV program almost all TV channel there are business news. There are business discussion with business customers. Recently I have seen some 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 customer some some business person about the tourism. So our country is in the tourism. It's a well tourist country. But now because of this problem. Uh, because of this virus problem it affected so there were discussion so he was telling various various things about the tourism so they are by uh, every day you have to update your knowledge every day you have to update your knowledge so then of course the appraisal evaluation are very easy when you when you get the more and more experience and very quickly you can finish your appraisal evaluation okay okay fine now it is 10:20 we have a break now uh, we meet here by 10:30 10 minutes is okay right uh, we meet here by 10:30 now okay is a break for the tea so you must prepare for an open straight forward interview with the customer now you have the information about the customer so now you are uh, you have collected the necessary information now you have checked a mark and highlight the shady areas and items need further clarification in those documents and make notes to facilitate cross checking so be prepared so open prepare for an open straight forward interview so behavioral aspects of accept in the interviews interviews so you must uh, certain behavioral aspects you must maintain appointment punctuality greeting then casual talk talk of environment listen to the customer discuss the business negotiate the next step really appointment so you must tell the customer on this date this time please come for the appointment or come for the interview so you maintain that give that appointment yes and you must maintain the punctuality you must maintain the punctuality yeah If you arrive, if you are going ten thirty, then ten thirty, you have to be there in your seat, right? Or if there is sometime uh, unavoidable circumstances, you won't be there. So inform him in advance. Sorry, today we are unable to have the interview. You may come on some other day. Yes. But if today I may get late. Maybe I may get late due to some other. urgent uh, appointment uh, and engagement so please come by instead of 10:30 8:30 please come by 10:30 yeah because he is also a busy person he also has to manage his time you have to 
in the greeting. So when he comes, you welcome. You welcome the customer. And then casual talk, you must have uh, not the way the official verb talk and everything. You may put a casual talk to him. And talk of environment, think about how the environment, how is the traffic, uh, whether it is difficult to come from such a uh, distance, about whether it is raining, whether it is a very hot sun, unbearable yet, maybe like that, yes. Then they listen to the customer. What the listen customer says, you must do. You should be a good listener. You should be a good listener. Yes, you must listen to the customer. Then they discuss the business, his business. Uh, now, of course, you know, you have, you have gone through his, all the documents and you, know, you have the information. So then negotiate whether to reduce the amount or what is the terms and conditions or the thing. Yes, you can, but not the final decision. What are the possibilities? What and what things you can negotiate with him about the business, about the facility, you can negotiate. But it's not the final. You negotiate with him. Then what's the next step you are going to do? So certain behavioral aspects in interviews, any type of interviews, you have to maintain. Any type of interviews, you have to maintain certain behavioral aspects. Once again, the appointment, maintain the appointment, punctuality, greetings, welcome. I know there were some big people. Whenever the customer comes, they go to the door, handshake. Now, of course, you can't handshake also. At least say, I go on. And greetings, bring him, ask him to take his seat. Then the casual talk, talk of the environment, how is the environment, all type of environment. Just listen to the customer. That is an important thing. And discuss the business about this business, yes. Negotiate, yeah, about the, his requirement and what and what things do agreeable, certain things, not the final decision, just next step. Greet and treat. Yes. When the customer comes, yeah, greet. Respect him. Walk to the customer, then offer refreshment. Yeah, definitely the, the corporate customers, big customers, big distributor, big uh, directors will come. Big directors make, yeah. They are also big companies, corporates. So walk to the customer, offer refreshment order, ask them whether they prefer tea or coffee or any other soft drinks, yeah, over the refreshment. And then introduction, you start. You start about the application and their requirement, I think. So introduction, yes. And uh, Sometimes you may not know those directors, so introduce yourself and get them also who and who, what is their position, another thing, you can get from them. Be a good listener, yes. Be a good listener. Do not interrupt so that you are listening. Yeah, that is very important. Yeah. And uh, uh, I know one of our, our Superior officer, a very good listener. He won't interrupt. Whatever the, the customer say, he just peacefully listen. And he put only one or two words, only one or two words, but very valuable, weighted words. So do not interrupt the customer. So you are listening. So you are listening. Then that will give the customer an encouragement. Yes. Do not challenge. Sometimes you may be not agreeable with these ideas. So respect ideas. Don't challenge. Don't challenge. Suggest alternate ideas. You can suggest, so why don't you think this way? Why don't you do this way? Sometimes certain ideas you may not like. So you may you may not you may not not sorry, not like, you may not agree with. So anyway, respect these ideas, but suggest some alternate ideas in case if you are not agreeable to certain ideas, business idea or business proposals, maybe. Contribute with your knowledge. At the same time, you contribute your knowledge. 
success stories. Yes, that is because you are in this position, you have seen so many customers, so many businesses. So there are so many success stories. There are so many. There are a few failures also. Maybe. Success stories. We have some certain stories I told you. As a, a businessman, uh, one bank has put him up through, but because of the one man wrong thing, that customer left the bank and went to other banks. Other banks with open arms, they were coming. They embraced him and they were giving all. They were giving all the support, all the facilities. But that bank man was yeah, raised by one particular bank. So these things happen. Success story, yeah, yeah. yeah. So many success stories, and maybe few failures also. You can discuss with him. Contribute with your knowledge. You contribute with your knowledge. Be tactful. At the same time, you should be tactful. So, study his strengths and weaknesses. So this is important. That's what you must have the skill. You must develop the skill. you must develop this skill as a good credit officer credit manager you must develop the skill knowledge as a well less skill interviewing skill study his strengths and weaknesses this of course behavioral aspect you have to develop you have to develop the behavioral aspect you have to develop you may be meeting your best customer yes he may bring lot of business to you your bank you may be meeting your best customer then so you have to be very tactful what are his strengths what are his weaknesses then credit facilities with other bank they may be banking with this obviously big corporate customers they have so banking with so many other banks they have their credit facilities so you must credit facilities with other bank outside world Sometimes they would have had some outside borrowing. Now, I in early I was discussing with you uh, credit facilities, formal and informal lending, formal and informal lending, institutional credit and non-institutional credit, formal and informal lending. I was discussing. The informal lending some people prefer because convenience of borrowing. the informal lending the interest rate is high very high but some people prefer because convenience of borrowing the word convenience of borrowing this formal borrowing there are so many yes documents and uh, so many things but the informal borrowing if he knows you he has given millions that is happening in peta peta market informal borrowing People are borrowing. In a day, they are borrowing millions with high interest rates, but they are repaying it also on the same day or the following day, or maybe within a within a short period with the high interest rate. The convenience of borrowing with the informal borrowing. Right. So the outside borrowing sometimes yes, they may have the outside borrowing also. And there may be untold story. There may be various stories. So be tactful and find out this information at the time of interview. Be tactful. So this behavioral aspect you have to develop. We can't put it in you. You yourself should understand, and you have to develop to be a successful and very efficient credit officer, credit manager. cross selling and up selling so cross selling at the same time we had, we were telling about you the cross selling yes cross selling in your family detail staff requirements future investment plan lifestyle whether he is busy he may be busy and whether he is traveling very frequently yes the big customers big corporate directors very frequently they travel they travel and they are very busy yeah very busy they love business they only love is the business yes, there are some people money making 
money making some business people yeah that is they are very very industrial and uh, that's what enterprising enterprising they love their business they love their business but as a successful business he must have love of his family love of his business also tani kara business with i love nang no that is <laughs> unable to accept yeah so the lifestyle whether he is a busy type person frequent traveler so you must find out all this information and based with your experience so you also are a very experienced person so you must advise with your experience he needs the whole world yes he can develop his business he can develop the business this is his real requirement but as he won't really then change of technology sometime they the technology they need to change they need international trends how about international trends if they are the exporting business maybe they importing the raw materials and various thing for their businesses so the international trends also with you because you have seen so many customers you may be dealing with so many different different sectors customers businesses so you can advise see. at the same time you also are in a better better position to advise you you get that that knowledge that knowledge also beneficial to you so international trend future of industries the industries how is the future of the industries you can time management is very important always i am telling you value of time is very important be precise and accurate yeah so don't drag the discussion don't drag uh, uh, without any time frame another may be waiting to meet you so you have given appointment to another person also or maybe sometime that person would have come without the appointment to maybe urgency to meet you so be precise and accurate don't waste the time value of the time keep it in mind time management in the interview is very very important so keep the time management no down key points so in the discussion you should be a best listener and future reference what are the things avoid confusion later so no down the key points but are the important thing you have observed today interview other information are there but are the other information already you have you have the information based on that and only today you had that interview so in the interview what are the additional information no down those information maybe for the future reference avoid confusion later otherwise you if you walk at now you may get confusion and for the record purpose then target dates to complete the job so now after the interview within this date i have to complete this job you target the dates to complete the job so this is time management okay so note down note down the key points which is uh, which the outcome of today's interview for the future reference to avoid confusion later sometimes there may be confusion whether this has happened or not confusion no to avoid that one and then for record purposes also also target dates to complete the job inform requirements advance then from the from the interview if there are any other any other uh, other other further inform information or requirements you inform at once do not request document every time he calls follow up the meeting with the lecturer yes list out all requirements if you cannot fulfill in form so whatever the requirements additional requirements which is outcome of today's interview you inform him at once not uh, ask the various various things uh, frequently frequently so list out all requirements all requirement what you want after the interview we list out right if the in if the interview is 
successful if it is okay for you if the interview is okay for you then you have to carry out an inspection this is also for the collection of additional information so first of all documents submitted application plus other documents submitted by the customer there you collected the information based on the information he called for the interview so in the interview also you collected the information what are the other things we have just noted out yeah inform requirements what are the other information or in, in requirements so now after the interview if you are satisfied if you are satisfied then you will go for the inspection you go for the inspection if you are satisfied at the interview give a date and time for the inspection at the end. Okay. now okay fine we will come for an inspection on such and such date at the time you tell the customer after the interview so if you are satisfied you inform you advise the customer about the inspection the date and the time for the interview for the inspection two scenarios in inspection in inspection there can be two scenarios one is existing business or the enterprise one is existing business it can be existing one other one new business yes and new project new business or new enterprise okay yeah these two scenarios are possible prepare groundwork for the inspection now you are going for the inspection that also you have to prepare before the interview also you have to prepare you prepare the gray areas you marked and what kind of things you marked and prepare user for the interview similarly for the inspection also you must prepare the ground work for the inspection go through already collected information and make notes already collected through the document through the interview you have collected information right so prepare ground work for inspection go through already collected information and make notes what and what things i am going to check in the inspection item to be checked details be looked into note down questions to be asked make a visit plan you have to make a visit plan prepare yourself for the visit inspection visit right inspection existing business so is an existing business or maybe existing project you are going on the inspection first check the address first of course after going there check the address whether you have come to the correct place so address may be of the existing business address may be with you so whether you check you have come to the correct place check the name board for the name of the business and address name board see whether is a correct name name of the business and the address whether it is correct whether we haven't come to any wrong place so we have come to the correct place correct with business registration so in the business registration also the same address name is mentioned name and address is mentioned yeah check that the business registration check check the asset and liability position check the level of operation so then you know check what are the assets what are their liabilities check with the customers what are the assets what are their liabilities so check the asset and liability position existing business existing check the level of operation then so how is the operation maybe a industrial business maybe industrial manufacturing or maybe a trading maybe an agriculture so check the level of operation everything the operation how the operation is going on check that one present asset position present asset position existing business check the present asset position there can be fixed assets land building plant and machinery vehicles other fixed other fixed assets other fixed assets mean we say generally computer system typewriters furniture and fitting fire extinguishers acs standby generator 
all these are coming under other fixed assets. So when we say fixed asset, land, building, plant and machinery vehicles. And other fixed assets, all these things will come as the other fixed assets. So each item, you check what is the condition, what is the age, what is the capacity. Each of these items need for additional assets, whether this business need any additional assets. Or can they manage with these existing assets, all these assets, to maintain their present production level or the anticipated increased production level? Whether can they manage? Whether can they go ahead with the present uh, uh, production level or anticipated increased production level for that one? Whether the condition, age, capacity of these fixed assets are sufficient? Or whether they need any additional assets for the business? Whether they need any, they want to expand, whether they need any additional assets. Check that one. Then the current assets. So current assets, inventory, inventory, stocks, that is, stocks, inventory. So stock in trade or, or uh, stock in trade, that is, for the trading purposes, they maintain the stock. Maybe rice trader, maybe rice stock, or maybe a garment trader, garments. Whether it's a uh, textile trader, textiles, stock in trade. Then raw materials. If it's a manufacturer, industrialist, raw materials. Then how is the work in process? Artha nimibhand. Artha nimibhand. Work in process or work in progress. Work in process. Work in progress. How is the work in process? Then finished goods. How is the finished goods? Then what is the packing materials? So manufacturer or industrial, they may use packing materials to pack the finished goods. So packing materials, stock. So inventory, we all do the stock position. Inventory, that includes stock in trade, or stock uh, raw material, work in process, finished goods, packing material, etc., etc., etc. Whether there is any obsolete stock, you have to look into. When this obsolete stock means cannot be used, cannot be used or cannot be sold due to outdated, maybe due to outdated. If it is a garment, whether the style has gone, cannot be sold. So obsolete means cannot be sold or cannot be used due to various reasons, maybe outdated, maybe style has gone. So obsolete stock, if there is anything, you have to separate them. Otherwise, that obsolete stock will give a higher current asset value. It will increase the current asset value. So, but it is of course no use. They can't sell it, they can't use it. So that can be separated and find out what is the actual inventory, a uh, current asset inventory position. Then there may be consignment stock. There may be consignment. What is the meaning of consignment stock? Stock given by the supplier for this enterprise for them to sell and pay. So consignment stock actually given by the supplier or the manufacturer to this enterprise for them to sell and pay. But here he can show it as a current asset given increased current asset value. So the consignment stock, if there is any, you have to separate that one from the asset current asset position. Similarly, more case to other banks. Sometimes now, nowadays these businesses they are maintaining accounts with various banks, they are borrowing with from various banks. Sometimes this stock would have been maybe more case to some other bank. Now he is showing to you. So if it is the stock is stock, stock of inventory, when it is more case to a bank, uh, it's very difficult to find out whether it is stock. By talking, by your cleverness only, you have to find out whether that particular stock is more case to other bank or not. So that also you have to be careful, more case to other bank. Then the 
debtors in the debtors so that, that means the people who have borrowed they have trade debtors borrowed items on on credit they the borrowed item on credit from this company so these are debtors so in that case whether those debtors are paying the company regularly or there are any bad debts whether there are any bad debts they borrowed they purchased the items on credit from this company trade debtors but they didn't pay in time the defaulters so what is a npa position so they also this company also may have their non performing uh, assets non performing advance position npa for them so they are defaulters so what you had to do those defaulters you had to separate from the debtors receivable amount receivable from there you had to separate this otherwise so if the bad debts also included in the debtors then what happened it will give increased amount increase current asset value so all these things you have to separate and take what is the final current asset value so they are of course you have to take out the obsolete stock then you have to take out the consignment stock you have to take out the mortgage stock uh, stock mortgage to other bank take and finally in the case of debtors that is trade receivables trade receivable you have to take out the bad debts then finally you have to calculate what is the current assets in the inspection in the current liabilities creditors yes yeah maybe other companies give items on credit to this company so this particular customer may borrow maybe borrow raw materials or maybe borrow packing materials from the other company from credit so who are the creditors to this company whether right then the accruals so whether the utility payments are getting accrued and or promptly paid promptly so what are the accruals you have to find out whether applicants payments are regular so in these cases whether applicant is paying his payment to the creditors or to other utility uh, suppliers they are paying regularly or getting accumulated that you have to find out so if his payment is bad not good then you have to be careful then sign up over trading adverse trading liquidity run the sign so so all these things whether it is over trading or adverse trading or liquidity run affect the liquidity position of the company affect the liquidity position of the company liquidity position of the company mean the company's current assets that is cash ability to pay back the pay back the uh, the short term borrowings in time the liquidity of a company or a person or who whoever it is the ability to pay the short term borrowing in time the cash position the has position the ability to pay the short term borrowings short term borrowing. if that position is bad then we call it liquidity problem so now the meaning of over trading what is over trading now working capital just think about the working capital any business the working capital is an important thing one is fixed capital other one is working capital so both together we call total investment in a business the total investment is one for the fixed capital other one is the working capital fixed asset for the fixed capital for the fixed assets like land building uh, machinery vehicle other fixed assets etc that is fixed permanent investment other one is working capital investment working capital investment is the investment on current assets current assets if it is an industrial concern 
stock of raw material, stock of work in process, stock of finished good, then debtors or receivables, cash in hand or bank, or together current assets. So that is called as working capital, more correctly, that is gross working capital. So for any business, there are two things. One is fixed capital, that is on fixed asset. Other one, working capital, that is on current assets. That is more correctly, gross working capital on current assets. Both are important. So fixed capital and the working capital, both are important. Those are permanent investment. As long as the business run, the fixed capital also should be there. The working capital also should be there. As far as the business run, the fixed asset also should be, fixed asset also should be there. The current assets also should be there. The fixed capital also should be there. Working capital also should be there. As far as the if you are closing the business, then well, you can sell your fixed asset and recover your money. You can sell your working capital, that is the current asset, you can recover when you are closing the business. If you are continuing the business, both should be there. That is one thing you have to keep it in your mind. Then, depending on the level of the business, whether the business is producing certain, say, 100 units per month. So that is the level of business. Manufacturing business or industry business, the level of the business. So every month they are producing 100 units. That is the plan. So the fixed asset is sufficient to produce the 100 units. Similarly, the working capital, the current assets also should be sufficient to produce the 100 units. That also other points you have to keep it in your mind. So depending on the level of operation, the fixed asset should be sufficient to produce that level of operation. Similarly, the working capital also should be sufficient to produce that level of operation, that carry out that level of operation. Okay, so now the company has sufficient the company has sufficient fixed asset and sufficient working capital to produce 100,000 units per month. 100,000 units produce and sell. They have. Now they want to increase that 100,000 units to 150,000 units. Okay, the fixed asset may be sufficient. The land, building, machineries, uh, sufficient to produce 150,000. But the working capital is not sufficient to produce that number of units. It is sufficient only to produce 100,000 units. The working capital in the end, the current assets. The current assets in the end, I have told you, stock of raw material, stock of working process, stock of finished code, then the debtors, that is uh, trade, the receivable, the debtors, cash in hand or the bank, that is the current asset, that is current asset that is sufficient to produce only 100,000 units. But if they want to increase the production to 150,000 units, the working capital also should be increased. <coughs> working capital also should be increased. So for that, they must bring cash. Working capital is really, it is the cash. Yes, working capital. They must bring the additional cash for the working capital. Without bringing, <coughs> without bringing additional cash into the working capital, if they try to produce 150,000 units with this working capital, which is sufficient only to produce 100,000 units, then the business will have problem. 
it will strain the working capital working capital is not sufficient to produce the 200000 unit if you want to produce 200000 unit they must bring additional cash into the business they know only the business will run smoothly without bringing the additional fund to increase the working capital if they try to do with the existing working capital if they try to produce 200000 unit then the working capital will get strained then everything will be a problem raw material stock will be early increasing lack of raw material stock lack of working gap, work in process then the finished good will be reduced then the trade letters receivable will get affected everything will be so smooth running of the business will get upset the business need cash the business need cash that position is called as over trading try to do the increase in the business operation without increase in the working capital correspondingly then that situation is called as over trading the working capital will get strained that is called as over trading then what 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 will happen business need cash the business actually the owners have to bring cash but whereas they didn't bring the cash then what will happen they they would have given checks for their customers the check may get returned then they will run to the bank for very often for short term borrowing overdrafts that type of customers only again and again come to the bank for the overdraft short term facility they because of the over trading not enough no insufficient working capital insufficient working capital mean insufficient cash so some medium term or long term arrangement has to be done long term or medium term finance has to be brought in to increase the working capital so that situation is over trading so whether this business your inspection whether it is over trading so over trading is finally liquidity that because they would have brought raw material they would have brought uh, purchased uh, packing material they won't be able to pay them they would not enough cash they would have brought raw material on credit they would have brought uh, packing material on credit so they are given check but there is no cash in the account check will get returned then the check is returned the raw material supply won't give up raw material again the packing material man won't give packing material again the business will suffer not enough cash then if they pay cash only the raw material will supply will give if they pay cash only the packing material supply will give so actually in this case the business need cash to increase the working capital so that should come as a medium term depending on depending on the business either a medium term or a long term borrowing from the bank that should come then only that over trading position could be avoided and the business could be improved so if you are a manager if the customer on and off come for a short term borrowing that is overdraft you can simply think it is over trading so you can speak to the customer whether he has sufficient working capital whether he has increased his production or marketing so what is the actual problem with him then you suggest him to go for a, a long term sorry medium term or a long term borrowing by providing suitable security so it is so the liquidity problem the customer is unable to pay his short term borrowing short term borrowing within one year that has to be settled so in this case whether it is over trading finally it is the liquidity problem the similarly adverse trading reduction in income affect high fixed cost enterprise adverse trading also due to reduction in income so when the income is reduced earlier case expanded business expanded so the over trading the liquidity problem the second one adverse trading 
income reduce so when the income is reduced what will happen again liquidity problem liquidity unable to pay their short term borrowing similarly liquidity run due to reduction in sales sales reduce maybe one is income is reduced due to various other reason income is due to various other reason and other thing sales reduce maybe poor quality of the product sales reduce that may lead to liquidity run again the liquidity problem all these three cases whether it is over trading or adverse trading or liquidity run finally affecting the liquidity i really also i told you profitability also important for a business liquidity also important for a business any business but which is more important liquidity is more important if there is a liquidity problem we are unable to pay the short term borrowing we don't have cash to pay the short term borrowing so short term borrowing the short term creditors won't give any credit to them then the business will collapse immediately so liquidity problem affects the business immediately lack of profit lack of profitability yes it also affect but not in a sudden it may take some time in a long term the profitability affect and close the business there as the liquidity in short term affect and close the business unless they improve the liquidity unless they bring the cash in it so the liquidity problem can be due to over trading maybe due to adverse trading maybe due to liquidity run right and then excessive capital commitment so these are during the infection uh, you have to talk to them and go through their books and find out whether there is all these cases there may be check return there may be they don't have uh, stocks to purchase the stock raw material or trading stock they have to make cash payment because the supplier is not giving unless they make the cash so these are the problem due to inspection with the discussion you can find out then whether there is excessive capital commitment sometime that happened they may bought a very big building whereas they carry out the business only in certain small area production in certain area thinking they can expand but that never happened put up a blown building they would have purchased very big machinery with excessive capacity they would have purchased machinery with excessive capacity but the capacity in operation may be about 15% 20% capacity utilization capacity of the machinery may be more but they are using presently or they are using only 15 or 20% capacity so excessive capital commitment they would have purchased lot of raw material stocks the day raw, raw material may be for about one month but they would have had about four months stock sometimes that may go obsolete also so excessive capital commitment is there so you have to analyze this current liabilities during the inspection time level of operation <clears throat> then production sale manpower how is the production how is the sale how is the manpower level of operation you have to judge then power usage whether it is single phase or double phase the three phase how is the power usage then how many units how many units electricity units what is the electricity bill yes then bottlenecks problems and prospects the bottlenecks if it is in production the bottlenecks yes the machinery may be the machinery is uh, there the machinery should be balanced balance me yeah maybe say just imagine for a certain production certain item production you need about three machine machine a machine b machine c so the raw material has to go through three machine first of course the raw material has to go through machine a then the machine b then the machine c finally the product will come the machine a may have a capacity of 10 tons 10 tons per day machine b is having 
capacity of 8 tons per day. Machine C is having a capacity of 12 tons per day. Just imagine three machines. So the raw material has to go through those three machines to get the product. First machine, machine A. Second machine, machine B. Third machine, machine C. First machine is having a capacity of 10 tons per day. Second machine is having a capacity of 8 tons per day. Third machine is having a capacity of 12 tons per day. Okay, what happened? First machine, 10 tons processed. Whereas the 10 tons cannot go through the second machine because it has the capacity of 8 tons. And then 8 tons only come out from the machine B. Whereas machine C, it has a capacity of 12 tons, but useless. Only 8 tons only will go through. So what will happen when it is going, first machine put 10 ton, 10 ton, 10 ton every day, then the machine B will process only 8 ton. So there is a bottleneck. There is a bottleneck. Sometimes if you're going from Colombo to Candy at the Pera uh, near Bridge, uh, the road is all wider and everything. At the bridge, of course, it is a narrow bridge after you can go. So all the vehicles, most of the vehicles will get this side of Peradeniya Bridge. Or whether it is coming from Kandy, uh, that side of Peradeniya Bridge, the vehicle will be. Peradeniya Bridge is the bottleneck. So similarly in the machinery. So what you will do, the machinery should be balanced. If first machine is 10 10 capacity, second machine also should be 10 10 capacity, third machine also should be 10 10 capacity then only it is balanced. Otherwise, we call it bottlenecks. So in the machineries, when the series of machineries are used in, 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 in production, in the industries, you must see all these machineries are balanced. Otherwise, there are bottlenecks. Then the potential for expansion. Whether there is potential for expansion. After doing all these inspections, you will judge whether this project, this business can be expanded depending on the asset position, working capital position, level of operation, workforce, based on all those things, you have to decide. Now you are collecting the additional information. Now you are collecting the additional information based on that one, whether this business can be expanded. Yeah. New enterprise. So all this time we were discussing about the existing enterprise when they form facilities. You do all those and find out finally whether this business can be expanded. Now, new enterprise. Okay, new enterprise. You are coming to the location. First, you are coming to the location. See the land. Whether the land is suitable for the purpose whether this land is suitable for the purpose. Extent is suitable, sufficient, or excess. Now, a person may have about five acres land, but he is going to do a, a industrial project. Maybe one acre is sufficient. So you will consider only the one acre. Otherwise, each acre, say about one million rupees, five acres, five million, he will say, oh, my contribution, five million, five acres. But it is not so. Out of five acres, you are going to take only one acre for this project. So your contribution, equity contribution, by way of land is one acre, that is one million, not five million. Okay, so exactly what extent of land is sufficient for the project you have to consider. What is one, one thing. And lack of space also no good. That also you have to look into. Sufficient extent should be there. Right. Then the location, whether it is flooding area, you must, you must look at it. 
whether it is after doing after doing the after doing the project when the heavy floods come if it is go under inundated or under water then this inside the water may go in affect everything machinery so material everything will get affected sometimes you would have been uh, insured so it's bad so the location you must see whether it is ideal or and another thing the one is of course land whether the 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 whether it is uh, undulating land then of course with the level leveling and everything is needed then the fixed assets you must look at it if available sometime maybe a new project but there uh, will sometime there may be some uh, fixed asset maybe they are in case if it is available to get the fixed away fixed asset if it is available land building plant machinery vehicle other fixed asset then the availability of utility you must look other factors the man power so things you have to look at we see location of the enterprise location first of all location access to the site whether you have a good access to the site maybe from the main road it may be about 500 meters interior so there it should be a good access maybe you want to establish a garment factory there so in the case of garment factory you have to bring uh, containers the raw material in containers and send out the finished good that is garment in containers so the access road should be sufficient for a container to come to the land uh, unload unload load and then turn and come back so you must see oh, otherwise if you ignore it then after establishing the garment factory for oh, about 500 meters half a kilometer the the raw material have to bring on the shoulders are you in the my end when they and similarly the finish could also kare udi in the mai arangenda venni so before establishing see whether the access so depending on the nature of the project or nature of the industry nature of the enterprise whether the access road is sufficient then the transport whether the transport facilities are there on the main road yeah whether public transport uh, facilities are there with the railroad train facilities are close by to think raw material supply line yes with there the raw material supply line the raw material should be available at the closer distance closer distance the raw material should be available now you may remember earlier paddy mills the colombo is the big consumer area for consuming area for rice so the paddy mills have been in, established lot of paddy mills have been established in area in the kambaha district developed area bardaha mulla bardaha mada yeah in those area lot of paddy mills have been established that comes under developed uh, electorate those things because to supply rice to the big consuming area kalambo whereas the paddy growing areas kolannarva uh, anradapura ambara those areas so from those areas paddy bro paddy was brought here to this factory these mills in marandaha mulla oh mada sorry uh, this is in developed area uh, milled and the rice supply to the kalam consumer market then the fuel price increased so the transport in paddy was costly because not only rice the rice was transported with the outer husk so for that one also transport cost so it is very uneconomical to bring paddy from 
paddy growing areas like Kambar, Polanaru, and rather to develop it here, Kambar district mill and supply the. Later, what happened? The mills have been established in Polanaruva, Ambara, Andradapur area itself. There it is milled, outer husk is removed, and then rice only transported. The transport cost was brought down. So they were able to supply rice at a lower price than before. So the factories should be, there were, there were two, I mean, four possibilities. One is, the processing uh, factory should be available either closer to the raw material or closer to the consumer market. But in the case of paddy milling, closer to the consumer market was not profitable, not, not economical. So the paddy mills were coming up in Poland, Narua, Andradapura, Ambara district, and they were able to supply rice at the lower cost than before. So you must think. Raw material supply line should be closer to your factory, depending on the nature of the factory, nature of the industry. So that also you have to look at raw material supply. Then the labor availability. Yeah. The whether the labor, suitable labor, if it is a labor intensive project, whether the suitable labor is available in the area. One big mistake, what happened? Oh, garment factories, 200 garment factories were established all over Sri Lanka and most of the factories have been closed now because non-availability of the skilled labor for these garment factories. Some, some garment factories still operating by sending vehicles, buses to other areas, other districts, bringing in the morning the working force, working people and in the evening sending them by the buses. So that is cost is increased, cost of production increased. Then it is uneconomical, unclear, not very competitive in the garment market, in the, in, the foreign, in the foreign garment markets. So always think the raw material should be available closer, depending on the nature of the, the, nature of the industry and the labor availability also should be there. You must and then environment suitability. Whether this particular industry, whether what they are going to do is environmentally suitable, whether environment problem will be there, whether it will causing harm to the environment due to various things. Pollution, water pollution, air pollution, uh, sound pollution, noise pollution. So there are various pollution you have to think about. So the location of the enterprise during the inspection, you have to set aside all these things you have to look into. Then the land. Yes, location, the consumer satisfaction. Yeah, therefore this project, whether this location is satisfactory. Then the land. Extend, what is the extent? What is the nature? I have already told you whether extent is sufficient or excess in that case. You must consider only the necessary action. Then the nature of the land, undulating, rocky. There, is, uh, there are stones. Uh, they have to, you have to, whether land development is required, whether land has to be developed by leveling, uh, yeah, filling, leveling, whether you have to put retaining wall, drainage facilities, whether you have to. Year of purchase, when this land was purchased by the company, the entrepreneur, what was the price at the time? And what is the current estimated value? You have to estimate the current value. What is the current value? Maybe he would have bought this land about five years back. Obviously now the current value maybe would have been higher land. <clears throat> the building and structures sometimes, the new project, Sometimes there may be earlier buildings would have been there. So that uh, the company won't do modify or suitably convert for their new industry or new purchase. So nature, what is the nature of the building? Mode of construction, how it is constructed, whether it is brick or cement brick or mud brick or whatever it is. What is the approximate age of the building? What is the flow area? 
If it is a factory, what is the total flow area? Then, then breadth. What is the cubic area? If it is storage, then the, you must consider the height also. What is the cubic area? Then, what is the construction value at the time? What may be the present value? Utilities, whether water supply, electricity supply, communication supply, facilities are ah, there. Internet facilities are ah, there. Whether the utilities, availability. Plant, if whether sometimes the machinery also may be there. Earlier, earlier operated uh, industry, maybe the machinery may be there. In that case, plant layout, how is the machinery having? Lead out. Evident problem if any. If there are any problem. And whether need for expansion. This has to be expanded. Whether there is a necessity to expand. Just see that one. Yes. <clears throat> then machinery and equipment. These are fixed assets. As you looked at the land, then the buildings. Now the machinery, in the case of new project, new enterprise, but sometimes the building uh, machinery would have been there. So in that case, you have to see those things. Machinery, what is the make, model, identification number. Most of the machineries, the identification numbers are there. So in that case, you have to take down those. Some machineries, there is no identification number. What is the install capacity? So the machineries, I have told you, what is the processing machinery? They have a capacity. So maybe, yes, for let's say, maybe it produces 100,000 units per day. So that is the install capacity. So the install capacity can be, can be uh, defined or can be tell how many units the machinery has the capacity to produce per unit of time. Per unit of time in maybe eight hours a day, or maybe two shifts a day, or maybe for a week, or maybe for a month, or maybe for a year. Per unit of time, what is the maximum capacity that machinery can produce? The number of units. That is the install capacity. So what was the purchase price or value at that time? Then service contracts, sometimes, the supplier of the machinery would have had a service contract, had a service contract. So in that case, whether there is a service contract for this machinery, history of machine repairs, whether there are, whether these machines have been repaired. In that case, whether what I wrote is the history of machine repairs, evident technical problem, whether there are any technical problem with these machineries. So these are the machineries available, maybe the new enterprise. So they would have purchased this land with all the machineries and other things. If there is no machineries, no problem, you no need to. But if there are machineries, you take those information. Then the vehicles. Yeah, they may have the vehicles. So make model registration numbers of the vehicle, take down. But also the purchase price, but maybe the current value, state of repairs, whether the state of repairs of this vehicle, collect that information. <clears throat> Other fixed assets, yes. Furniture, office equipment, ancillary power, standby generator, air conditioners, fire extinguishers, computers, computer systems, tools, these are other fixed assets. So take down those information. But are the other, other assets, what is the value, what may be the current value, whether they are a state of they are state of repairs, all the information you collect in regard to fixed assets. Then the inventory. Then come to the inventory. Yes, stock of raw material, take out. If there is, if there is, if it is a new enterprise without anything, no problem. Yes, if but new enterprise, but they have purchased with all these things, then you have to take down. Raw material. What is the stock of raw material? What is the value? What is the work in process? Stock, the value. What is the finished goods? Stock, values. Consumable for these projects. What are the other consumable items? Various other things they may, they may use. Yeah? Maybe stationaries, maybe other, other things, other consumable items. 
so you take down then the packing materials yeah what are the packing materials values quantity each item what is the quantity and the values then obsolete so i have already told you the meaning of obsolete so if there is anything yes separate them separate them then finished goods yeah if the finished good quality problem if there are any quality problem sales problem in regard to finished goods if there are sometimes there may be finished good so if there are any quality problem or sales problem yeah get that information in the debtors yes the trade debtors that is amount receivable amount receivable trade data the company would have sold items their products on credit so position at cost what is the position at cost i have already told you those trade debtors also there may be defaulters they may have there may be defaulters so you have to separate that one so that we call it age analysis do a age analysis over to you people separate them age analysis do the age analysis in regard to debt <clears throat> then the debt collection system how they collect the debts what is the system through some external debt collectors or they collect the postdated checks or they send their own people for the collection yeah what is the debt collection system after selling how do they collect the debts what is the system and what are the controls they are using for these debts what are the controls Whether they are getting postdated checks, then spiraling debtors. Whether the debtors are spiraling, increasing. Whether the in so what will happen if the debtors are increasing? What happen? Yes, liquidity problem will come. The money will be tied up with the debtors. Unless in that case, if they are increasing the sale, they must bring additional working capital because when they are increasing the sale. More money will be tied up with the debtors. They will take time to pay. More money will be so. Since the money is tied up there with the debtors, the company has to bring additional working capital. If they do, if they don't bring, there will be working capital problem. What is that? There will be over trading, liquidity problem. So you must understand that one. You must collect that information. Similarly, the creditors. This company may borrow items on credit, so there may be creditors. Age analysis for the creditors also whether this company paying regularly or defaulting. Payment history whether these people are paying their creditors in a regular way, regularly within the time frame within the credit uh, the condition whether they are paying. Ah, there are supply disruption. If they don't pay the creditors well in time, then the creditors won't supply the item. Suppliers, so there may be supply disruption. Whether there are any supply, if there is any supply disruption, the one reason may be this company is not paying them on time. Then the work workforce. Then the workforce. right now workforce number in each category <coughs> workforce Number in each category. There may be so many categories. <clears throat> Maybe supervisors, technical supervisors, uh, workers, skill workers, unskilled workers, uh, casual workers, right? That helpers. Number in each category. So you must take down number in each category. Then the wage rate. What is the wage rate for each category? What is the wage? Then mode of payment. How are they paid? Whether they pay in monthly, or two by two weeks, 
or by weekly or by day or no, no payment at all <laughs> sometimes yeah so you must find out but it's a mode of payment then whether there is overcrowded yes sometimes uh then the required number yeah maybe more people I will tell you a good a good example. In down south, there was a poultry farm. That owner is a is a very nice person, kind-hearted kind-hearted person, uh, and uh, respected by his uh, area people and everything. So he had a poultry farm. So the relations and other people go and ask for the work. So he put them in his poultry farm to work. Ultimately, what happened? The number of workers is more than the number of birds there. <laughs> number of uh, workers become more than the number of birds. Ultimately, what happened? The farm was closed. Farm was closed. So, though oh, how much of kind-hearted you are, so there should be a way to employ people. You know, whoever come and ask for the work, he put it in the farm. That's what happened. So. Overcrowded. You must see whether there is overcrowded. This means that means more people than the required number. More people working. Similarly, the labor shortage. Yes, like our garment factories, whether there are labor shortage. Some places labor shortage is a crucial problem. So you must find out that one also. Then the management team. How is the management? This is because any enterprise that mainly depends on the management. The management is efficient and good, the enterprise will run well. Then position and numbers. What are the position and what are the numbers? That is <clears throat> the administrative officer, financial officer or the accountant or financial manager, production manager, marketing manager, marketing supervisors or marketing like that different different management team and what number are employed then what is the experience what are their qualifications these are very important salaries and other fringe benefits paid to them so what are the experience of these marketing sorry these management people their qualifications, salaries, and other benefits. In the interpersonal relationship, actually, among the management team, there is interpersonal relationship should be sound. Then only the company can run smoothly. Interpersonal relationship. See, among themselves, there should be a very good interpersonal relationship. Then only the company is. If one person is trying to cut the neck of the other person, then there is problem and the company won't survive. So for the company to survive, the management team should be a very effective and very efficient and their interpersonal relationship should be very sound. So you have to get that information. <clears throat> In the operations. In the operations. <clears throat> Production process. I told you, in the case of industry or manufacturing, as a credit officer, you must know what is the production process. What is the production process? First. So any, 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 any production, any manufacturing, anything. Rice milling? Yes. Tea processing? Plastic? item production of plastic items or rice flour production noodle production any other food production any any medicine production whatever the thing you must have the production process how that particular product is produced as a credit officer you must get that information <clears throat> you may not know but talking to that people, talking to others, yeah, when you are handling a particular plastic production. So how the plastic item is produced? There are plastic granules. 
there are plastic granules. The imported item, are there are locally recycled granules sold there. there. Imported item we call virgin granules, then recycled granules are there. The certain, depending on the what item you are using, the quality of the plastic is a, a good. If you are using imported virgin granules, then the produced item is good. If you are producing from the recycled item, recycled granules, then the, the, you may get some but poor quality of the product. Then the processing. Then the processing. How the processing is done. So that you must know. There are mold used. There are mold used in the plastic processing. So what type of blow molding or what type, what type of. So those products and process you must know. For example, now rice milling. There are large scale, big rice millings. Huh? They are modern rice milling. Earlier, small scale rice milling. They are poor quality. The rice also poor quality. But now, good quality rice is being produced. So, now the rice is from the paddy. First, we see the production process of paddy milling. Paddy is coming from the field. So, the paddy millers are purchasing. So with the paddy, since it is coming from the field, there may be small stones, sand, could have been there in the gunny bag of uh, paddy gunny bag, all these things, impurities may be there. So before milling, what you had to do, you had to remove those things. So in the machineries, there are a series of different types of machineries that are being used in paddy milling. First, the paddy is coming, and there is a stone remover machine. There is a stone remover machinery called stone machine remover. So, through which the paddy is going. Then, that machine removes any stone, sand, other things are removed from the paddy. Sometimes, one stone removing machinery is not sufficient. So they may have two machines. First machine, and then again passing through the second machine. Then the sand and stone will be removed completely. Now the paddy is there. Paddy is coming. So two stone removers have been used for the paddy. Paddy coming from the field. <coughs> so these two machines remove the stones and other impurities sand and etc. Then the paddy is passing through hauler. Hauler. Hauler is the machine that removes the outer husk from the paddy. Hauler. The second machine. Second type of machine. Hauler. So this hauler, earlier hauler, there were stones have been stone hauler. That what will happen? That will damage the rice. So earlier machineries damage is higher. But now the hala rubber rolls. Rollers have been made of rubber. So that won't damage the rice. So now the good quality rice. This is the difference between earlier paddy milling and the present day paddy milling. Earlier hala and the present hala. Now the yeah, hala paddy outer cover, husk is removed. I'm talking about the raw mill, raw rice production, not the parboiled, raw rice production. Kakulu hal nispadani, kakulu hal nispadani. So hala. Right, but sometimes still some stone may be there. Some sand particles may be there. Again, stone remover. Against so that completely remove the stones and sand particles. <clears throat> now poor rice is come. <coughs> now if it is samba, samba should be some pure white rice. So there may be sometimes some black particles may be there. If there is black particle particle in the rice, 
that reduce the quality of the rice so those particles black or brown color particle that should be removed color separate there is another machine color separate so rice is passing through the color separate that removes the brown and black color rice particles so rice removed now the pure white rice sometime you have to polish it so there is another machine polisher now the rice is passing through the polisher to certain level rice is polished now the final product has come the rice now it goes through the weighing and packing machine so now it is weighed 25 10 kilo bag or 25 kilo bag or 50 kilo bag and pack go into the stores of finished product finished product stores this side raw material stock this side finished finished material finished product stores so there are two separate rows one is the raw material stores and another one is finished product stores in between once again stone remover stone remover second stone remover then hala machine then the hala machine then the hala h u l l e r hala machine then the color separator remove in the black color or brown color material from the rice and then polish and then yes packing so this is the production process now here what is the install capacity so each machine will have a capacity and that capacity should be balanced otherwise as i explained you earlier yeah maybe bottleneck bottlenecks the problem so the machinery of the capacity should have been balanced this is raw rice mill production production process so you must have a production process you must draw it you must draw a diagram first machine second machine third machine like that you must draw. now here another thing these machineries from one machine how the rice is or the paddy go into the other machine maybe manual so from one machine first people have to take it and bring it to the other machine but now in the modern machinery is it is not there there are conveyors or elevators there is a system called conveyors or elevators what is uh, what happening from one machine automatically through a motor a uh, rice is passed on to the other machine we call it there are elevator system or conveyor system from one machine to another machine so number of employees is reduced use of number now everything in machinery electrically operated machineries they are doing all these function and from one machine it is going to the other machine so electrically operated so manpower usage is cut down but only thing one supervisor or the technical person will be operating and watching there one technical person may be there so this is raw rice mill production so now install capacity i have told you all these machinery will have a capacity equal install capacity balanced so install capacity is a maximum production no units produce per day maximum units produce per day or per week or per month or per year per unit of time maximum units produced per unit of time that is the install capacity what is the utilized capacity sometimes if it is a paddy mill we may we may we may have a capacity install capacity of 50 tons per day 50 tons install capacity per day or 8 hours per day if it is so if we are using 25 ton per day then that is a utilize capacity that is 25 tons out of 50 tons capacity that is 50% capacity utilization we call it that is 50% capacity we using so there are two words you must know install capacity of the machinery 
then utilize capacity of the machinery how what is the maximum units produced per unit of time that is a install capacity out of that how much the unit, how many units are produced now that is the utilized capacity then capacity utilizes and go 100% how much is it then bottlenecks in processing whether they are uh, bottlenecks in the processing in this production process this is the production process what i explained to you whether there are any bottlenecks so bottlenecks in processing need machinery balancing whether if there are bottlenecks if they are imbalanced then the machinery should be balanced that has to be done other process problem there are any other processing problem maybe some machine may be damaged some machine is not performing well there may be not enough polishing there may be not enough removing of stones sometimes if it is a machines are older a problem then the stones may be stone remover that that may not remove the stones so whether there are any process problem you have to find out then average daily production how much do you need to produce average pretty and how is the turnover business turnover if the sales or marketing organization how is the sales turnover sales production statistics they would have the sales production and sale statistics how much of produce item produced how much sold per day or per week they would have a statistics you must go through it then service billing for servicing how they are billing whether the payment is regular or irregular for the services service billing how it is done then the wage record we have told you various people various type of wage the wage records available statutory obligation this is also important whether their statutory obligations are honored what is statutory obligation yes epf payment etf payment their statutory obligations and then tax payments whether they, they these things are done epf payment etf payment have been made statutory payment is a tax payments have been made so statutory obligation whether these people are honoring their statutory obligation then the future prospect how is the future prospect for this company based on this inspection based on this gathering these values you know how is the future prospect for this company for this uh, unit production unit or manufacturing unit you have to judge then so this is your inspection you have to do all these things only thing <clears throat> this inspections are from our experience how we performed our inspections especially this is the manufacturing or industrial enterprises inspection if it is a trading business the inspection is somewhat easy not uh, uh, not lengthy or anything but in the case of industrial or manufacturing concern the inspection collection of information are really uh, very tedious and you have to work very hard so we have given this information to you you can apply so when you are capable of doing industrial or manufacturing in enterprise inspection in any inspection it is easy for you it is easy for you so we have given you uh, our practical experience this you won't find in any books this inspection how to collect this information information collection you won't find from any books this is through our experience we are giving you so so you must learn it and how to apply in your day to day banking life you have to use it okay points to remember take down notes in the field visit book during the visit so whenever you are going there all these things it may take time it may take time sometimes some inspection they go high low high you just put it in there a to whatever it is, and then come back here yeah, no so take down notes in the field visit book during the so you must take down all those important thing you should take down then write the report immediately after return 
So no sooner you come back, the same day you write the report. Otherwise, though you have noted in the notebook certain thing after a week or so, you know, you may not be able to remember correctly what you have written. So then and there, write the report. Then and there, write the report. It is better for you, better for your bank, better for the customer. So set a format. So to, for the inspection report for writing, you better have your uh, format. That is, put a heading, yeah, field visit inspection or whatever it is. Date, time, the place visited, the company's name, address, right? Who are the other people associated with you in your visit? Right? And the route, how you have gone to that land, that description, how? you are going to that land. So in the case of main road, you give the, what is the name of the road? What is the name of the main road? What is the mile port? Where you have turned, how you have gone? Yes. And then your observations. And then your observations you give, right? And finally, you sign and your other, other associates who have accompanied you get their signatures. So this way you finish the, <clears throat> Inspection report. Set a format. You have a format. Okay. Well, now this is the run. Today, of course, we have completed how to collect, how to collect the uh, sources. What are the sources of information for you to carry out uh, a successful? credit evaluation, credit appraisal. So all these things really, as I told you, risk analysis, credit evaluation is really a risk analysis. So where the risk factors are available, definitely, obvious, there are risk factors. So which can cause a default risk, which can cause a default risk. So identify those things and how can you, how can you, uh, provide safeguards. How can you reduce those risk uh, factors? How can you provide safeguards and make that uh, uh, evaluation successful? And you are ensuring the repayment. As I told you, uh, well appraised facility, credit facilities have repaid. This is our senior bankers told those days. Still, that counts. So these are the are from our experience we are going to you. I hope uh, you will be a successful uh, credit officers by learning all these things. And then uh, maybe later I will meet you that uh, how to prepare credit memorandum, how to prepare a credit proposal out all these things to narrow down and put it in a few pages, maybe two or three uh, pages together with the uh, important thing as the uh, annexes for your higher management. Maybe that is your AGM or maybe your DGM or your credit committee or maybe the board how to prepare a credit memorandum. I may do it later. Okay, well, thank you very much. Now we are closing down. Okay.